Hey guys, welcome back to more political chatter, and boy did we just witness an extremely consequential debate. Just uh, concluding, you know, some number of minutes ago, the debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris took place. They debated uh, on ABC News in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, critical swing state, and it was intense. This was as opposite from the June debate between Trump and Biden, just as opposite as you could possibly get. Wow. In that debate, Donald Trump didn't have a very good performance either, but it was overshadowed by the disastrous performance of Joe Biden. This was not the same with Kamala Harris. That debate pushed Joe Biden out of the race that ended his campaign, while this is really revamping the Harris campaign, really putting her, I believe, in that front runner status. And we're going to get to the electoral map, the polls, everything in just a moment but they debated um again it just concluded a number of minutes ago and it went incredibly well for kamala harris so let's analyze this debate so um kamala harris slammed donald trump on a variety of issues kamala harris i don't know um yeah kamala harris in a very in a very interesting way was able to really lay out her policy positions while, you know, really with a happy medium, uh, really wrecking Donald Trump the entire time. I mean, every question since in for these independent voters, uh, independent-minded voters, these swing voters who really care about that policy substance, for you know, enough for them to enjoy. She definitely got more policy substance in than Donald Trump, who appeared incredibly incompetent compared to Kamala Harris. This was, you know, Joe Biden appeared incompetent compared to Donald Trump. This is the complete opposite. Now, Kamala Harris is 20 years younger than Donald Trump. They are two very different people. She appeared much more with it. She got her sentences out clearly. Unlike Donald Trump, it seemed like he was rambling much of the time. He wasn't making sense. He was talking about irrelevant things where voters need to know backstories on the, on, you know, a background on these. Um, This article, by the way, is from before the debate because the Trump's advisors, they were telling him, telling him, telling him, telling him, do not let, ha do not, um, let Harris get under your skin. Don't get annoyed by Harris, because apparently, according to this reporting, Harris does get under Donald Trump's skin. Harris does really bug, annoy, um, irritate Donald Trump a lot, hearing, you know, him hearing her speak. So their message, the Trump campaign, uh, their message to their candidate, Donald Trump, was do not get annoyed, do not get irritated, don't let her get under your skin because she will try to do that. And then there was more reporting from inside the Harris camp that that was exactly what they would try to do. And Harris did, in fact, um, uh, get under his skin, and it was successful. She successfully got under his skin. The Whatever the advisors told him was not enough because Donald Trump, just like that, took the bait. He took the bait, and he fell right into Kamala Harris's trap. He's, uh, um, you know, uh, very clearly, right, obviously getting extremely annoyed and bugged by Kamala Harris. I mean, um, for example, there was the um first the, there was the first instance of it was the rally sizes. That is exactly what it was. It was the rally sizes. Um, this is something that is um. Um, that, that, um, how do I say this? That Donald Trump is known to get upset about. He is always talking about rally sizes. He's obsessed with rally sizes. He always talks about it at his rallies. And Kamala Harris called out, um, whether this is true or not, I have no idea. But she said that people leave his rallies because he just rambles on about nonsense, about stuff that doesn't actually matter to American voters. Um, I think she said that he, that her own rallies were way bigger than Donald Trump's, that his crowd sizes were dwindling, something along those lines. That is exactly what gets Donald Trump annoyed, and it was successful. He, uh, Kamala Harris did get under his skin, to, and it was clear it annoyed Trump greatly, and, you know, he, he broke, he cracked, he, and, you know, Kamala Harris, what that means, he cracked, you know, Kamala Harris made him break. What that means is that um, he started talking about issues that are irrelevant to American voters. He started then talking about, he went into a whole segment 
about his rally sizes. Nobody cares about the rally sizes. Kamala Harris threw in one single short comment about his rally sizes, and then Trump goes into this long monologue about his rally sizes, something that the vast majority of American voters, 95%, do not care about at all. So overall, this was incredibly successful for Kamala Harris. That is exactly what she was, uh, what she needed to. And even comparing this to 2020, if the results, or I'm sorry, if the debate in 2020, the first debate or the second doesn't matter, had any debate on the results, Kamala Harris way outperformed the performance of Joe Biden, not just from the June debate in 2024, but yes, the the debates in 2020. You know, in the first debate, Trump imploded. But in this debate, Trump imploded even more. Plus, Kamala Harris went on the offense. She destroyed him. That was something that Joe Biden was obviously unable to do in the June debate. But even in 2020, he just let Trump speak and implode himself. But meanwhile, in this debate, Kamala Harris appeared, appeared extremely presidential, right? She, she uh, appeared extremely strong. And on that note, you might have noticed in the very beginning of the debate when they walked out, I think it was extremely important how Kamala Harris went over to shake Donald Trump's hand. It was obvious that Trump did not plan on shaking Harris's hand. He and Biden did in, in the June debate. Um, but Kamala Harris insisted she went over near his podium. And, you know, despite their height difference, despite him um, being a man and being a woman. And yeah, that is the unfortunate truth when it, you know, what in the minds of in uh, American voters, in many American voters. Um, but despite those differences, Kamala Harris appeared like the strong one. She appeared, you know, um, the more presidential one. And that is, you know, that really was the big theme of the night for Kamala Harris. She was basically, I mean, overall, not even that Trump isn't presidential just that he does, he that he is an unserious man, right? Putting it extremely generally, the entire debate was about Donald Trump um, being an unserious man, which I guess you could say about uh, Hillary Clinton's strategy in 2016, but it was different because Kamala Harris was actually bringing up, you know, this different election. Trump has now been president for four years, or he was, of course, um, from 2017 uh, to 2021. Kamala Harris actually brings up uh, you know, what he has done, his record, and how that has, that has affected the American people, you know, negative things about his record. While in 2016, you know, Hillary, yeah, she, she, whatever, said some negative things about him, but what was it about? You know, it was, I can't even think of an example, to be completely honest with you, with what Hillary Clinton did. It's a much different election this time around. I, I don't even think it's going to be close, guys, especially after the debate. And um, I didn't bring it up, but they want a second debate. The Harris camp is now proposing a second debate. The Washington Post is rep- is reporting that. Um, but I don't. I think that she's that um, she absolutely wins all the states that Biden did in 2020. So that's Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada. I really do. And then North Carolina is iffy. I think I'd still put that in Trump's column very narrowly. And then of course he is still favored slightly in Florida and Texas. But look, I think right now she matches Biden's map. If not, then she wins North Carolina as well. We're getting to a point where North Carolina is more likely to go blue than Pennsylvania is more likely than Pennsylvania is to go red. We we really are approaching that point. A truly historic debate. More videos on this to come as the polls come out on what American voters think of this. So thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe down below. We're trying to get to ten thousand subscribers as soon as possible. So please help me out with that. Again, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all next time.